with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading from the book of Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. And we'll read various verses together. Lamentations, chapter 3. Lamentations, chapter 3. Verse 1. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. He has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made my chains heavy. Even when I cry and shout, He shuts out my prayer. And let's read now from verse 18. And I said, My strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction and roaming the wormwood and the gore. Verse 37. Who is he who speaks and he comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? Why should a living man complain, a man, for the punishment of his sins? Let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. We have transgressed and rebelled. You have not pardoned. You have covered yourself with anger and pursued us. You have slain and not pitied. You have covered yourself with a cloud that prayer should not pass through. You have made us an offscoring and refuse in the midst of the peoples. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare have come upon us, desolation and destruction. And please, let's go to chapter 5 and read a few verses from there. Verse 1, chapter 5, Lamentations. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Look! And behold, our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens and our houses to foreigners. We have become orphans and waifs. Our mothers are like widows. We pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. They pursue at our heels. We labor and have no rest. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers sinned and they are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Servants rule over us, there is none to deliver us from their hand. In verse 16, The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this our heart is faint. Because of these things our eyes grow dim. Because of Mount Zion, which is desolate, with foxes walking about on it. You, O Lord, remain forever. Your throne from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time? Turn us back to you, O Lord and will be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. Amen. A man, Jeremiah, tragic we would say, in his ministry, a man full of the Holy Spirit, a man full of the presence of God, a man who God in his life is glorious, but 
He has never had a good result. Unbelievable. No fruit at all. By the Holy Spirit, He prophesied in power the future, what was to come. Through the Holy Spirit, with love, He exhorted the people of Israel to repent and return. Specific guidelines He gave so they can co-work, cooperate with the Babylonians to go back to Babylon. And when they finally moved, the ones left in Israel, no matter what He said to them, the people of Israel did the, quite the opposite. With great severity He rebuked kings, princes, priests, and even false prophets, wealthy men, poor men, and all the people in all the nations. He rebuked them with severity because of their unbelief, because they worshipped other things, idols, because of the vain hopes they gave to the false prophets, because of the ethical downfall of the people. No result. So, with complaint, he went to God in the end. Lord, I am a man. I am that man who has seen affliction throughout all his life. Just think, my brethren. A person, a Christian, full of the presence of God, the Spirit of God, holy. And in the end of his life, for him to pray and say, I've only seen affliction in my life. I was waiting for the light to come and there was only darkness. And when I prayed and cried out to God, You Lord, shut out my prayers. You would not listen to me. Not only people would not listen to me, but you God, my God, you did not listen to me. Even though we co-worked together, we spoke, you gave me direction, you gave me commandments. I saw nothing good in myself. I went from prison to prison, from affliction to affliction, from reproach to reproach, from pain to pain, from sorrow to sorrow, from humility to humility, from the beginning, from a small child in which you called me until the end of my life. But my Lord, Nothing happens. I can't say that the devil did all these things. Nothing is done if you don't command it. Nothing good or even bad doesn't come to pass, but only by your mouth, from your mouth. And I say, let's repent. Let's return. Let's confess our sins to the Lord. Let's exalt our voices to God and say, Lord, forgive us. The result, you covered yourself with a thick cloud so our prayers could not pass and reach your throne. Unbelievable, isn't it? Remember me from a young child. He's complaining. Isn't there healing in this? I know very, very well that the reason of all these things is transgression, iniquity and sin of the people. But is there healing in this? We repented, you did not hear us. We cried out, you did not answer. We humbled ourselves, you didn't do anything about it. Isn't there a cure for all this? Is there anything going to happen? We have reached the point to say that there is no, no suitable prayer, way, path, road to get near to you so we can be corrected. There's nothing for us to do. And he turns his eyes left and right. He turns his eyes to the people. What else can we do? I rebuke them, no result. I express my love, my humility, no result. I draw closer to God, I prayed, no result at all. 
I repent and I humbled myself and I resolved. I brought the people before you so we can repent all together, but no result. My brethren, beloved, it is the perfect dead end, but which we thank God, God, for all the situations and for even these situations he has foreseen an exit of freedom an exit of blessings an exit of restoration he has and always my beloved brethren God finds ways to bring down all the works of the devil to bring down the works of unbelief, of sin, of idol worshipping, where you say there is nothing. There God comes and says to each situation, I have, I have the cure, I have the way, I have the how, the when, I've got it. And the last words of Jeremiah, not only in his book, but also in his lamentations, is this blessed revelation, which is our message today, and which is the cure for all that's weak, the secret for all that's impossible, impossible by man and even to God. For God. Verse 21. Turn us back to you, you, O Lord, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. You, Lord, you can. I, your word, exhortation, my prayers, my repentance have no result. But, you Lord, you can, you can fix the heart of the people. You can find a way to fix my heart in that way, my husband's heart, my wife's heart, the people's heart, my relative's heart, my country's heart, to fix it in that way that you will return. So we can return. And so we can understand this world. My brethren, let's go please to the book of Jeremiah where in great detail now God explains the unique exits in what people see as dead ends for all people, even those who believe in God. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 18. God's speaking now. God is speaking with favor. I've surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. You have chastised me, and I was chastised like an untrained bull. Restore me and I will return, for you are the Lord my God. If you do not return me to you, nothing will be done. If you, Lord, if you return me, then, and only then, I will be able to return with all my heart, because you, you will be my Lord my God. And now he confesses, of course, since I return, then truly I repented. And since I returned and was taught by you, now I hit my head and said, what did I do all this time of my days? I was ashamed. I blushed because I held all my life 
I held the reproach in my young age, and our God continues in a pleasing way. Happy for the good results. Ephraim is my dear son. He is a pleasant child. For though I spoke against him, I earnestly remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him. Now that he has returned, truly returned, and is asking for me to return him truly, of course, I will show compassion to him. Now, set up signposts, make landmarks, set your heart toward the highway, the way in which you went. Now, I have brought you on the way in which you must walk on. No other person could. Not even Jeremiah, nor not the prophetical word, nor my love, nor my humility nor my rebuking. No one and nothing could, only I could. When you ask from me, for me to bring your heart there, so I will be able to truly intercede and intervene in blessings for salvation and for my glory. I return therefore now, that's how I see you, Virgin of Israel. O Virgin of Israel, return to your cities. How long will you gad about? O you backsliding daughter, for the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. The Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Now, I will not surround you as until now I deal with Jeremiah, with rebuking, with Jeremiah and his love, with Jeremiah and his prophecy, with Jeremiah and his prayers, with your prayers, with your repentance. Now, I will not surround you, but I return you, and you will surround me. Now you will draw near to me in a way that's pleasing. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thou shalt again use this speech in the land of Judah and in its cities when I bring back their captivity. Because you asked, you understood what the problem was, that there is no other way for you to return in the way you should, in the way it's needed, but only when you ask for me to return you. Now that I have returned you, everyone will say, The Lord bless you, O home of justice and mountain of holiness, because I did new things. The old things pass away. It's not now as it was up until now in your unsuccessful efforts, in your unsuccessful fight, which started by your faith, your initiative, your holiness, your labor, your devotion. No results at all. Your own initiatives, thoughts, labors, fastings, prayers. One is the secret. I and only I can return you. So you can return and be blessed. Amen.